I'm Jay, and this is the Yankee and the Brit. And again, today we're Britless, but I'm coming at you with some exciting shit from UFC 259. And the mad scientist Dana White did it for us once again because this card is stacked. Are you guys fucking geeked? I'm excited. Let's get into the first fight, though, because this fight card has four champions fighting on it. In three title fights. Think about that. Dana White gives it to the casual fan and the hardcore fan on every card. I'm so excited. This is my birthday weekend. I couldn't ask for more. But let's get into Santos and Rakic. Both of these guys have lead in their hands. They drop dudes. There is no play in either of these guys. They hit like a fucking brick. Now, Santos is coming off two losses. But if you think about it, he lost the split decision to John Jones. And he lost to Glover Teixeira. But he dropped Glover in the fight before he ended up losing. This dude is tough as fucking nails. Rakic is tough as they come. This dude beat Anthony Smith, who, if you guys know who he is... Fought a tough-ass fight with John Jones. Some people think that he may have got the better of John Jones in that fight. But whatever. The fact is, is both of these guys can bang. Both of these guys want to get back into title contention. And both of these guys believe that a win in this fight will catapult them to the top of the light heavyweight division. This fight should be a banger. If you're asking me, somebody's leaving that fucking cage knocked out. There's no way these two both walk out with a decision. Somebody's going to fucking sleep in this fight, and I can't wait. All right, guys, though. Getting into the second fight on the main card, title fights. We're already to title fights. Think of that. Jan and Sterling is a fucking great fight. Now, granted, Sterling's a fucking badass Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter, and Jan has fucking lead in his hand. Both of these guys have great stamina. They're both tough as nails. And I know everybody says that, you know, Jan has great takedown defense and that Sterling has to get him on his back to be able to beat him. But if you guys all remember, Sterling ain't no joke when it comes to standing on the feet either. He put those things on Jimmy Rivera. He fucking worked that dude. His hands are good, but they're not as good as Peter Jan's. And again, after I went through all that, I agree. Sterling has to get him on the ground to win this fight. But both of these dudes have cardio for days. Both of these dudes are fucking winners. Both of these dudes will give everything they fucking got. And styles make fights. So again, you got a BJJ guy against a striker. This is going to be a good matchup. I'm excited to see it. Jan probably should win this fight, but don't think that Sterling ain't got no chance because this is a bad fucking dude. And Sterling, besides outstriking Jimmy Rivera, after getting knocked out by Marais, this dude has been on a fucking terror in the UFC. Like I said, great Brazilian jiu-jitsu. His striking has been, done nothing but get better. This kid really wants it. But Peter Jan is a fucking monster. Jan only has one loss on his record. He's undefeated in the octagon. This dude is a beast. He is a banger with lead in his hands. He is a pure striker. With great takedown defense. But Jan is a slow starter. It took him two rounds in the Re Rivera fight to get his bearings to find the timing before he fucking dropped him. Also, he lost the first round to Uriah Faber before a devastating defeat that he gave to Faber. Faber took a loss in that one. But he beat the California kid handily. But he's a slow starter. He needs to find his timing. He needs to feel a guy out. So Sterling needs to come out strong and fast, get on him, take him to the ground. That's where Sterling's fight's going to be. You don't want to stand up and strike with Peter Yan, even though Sterling's um, striking has gotten a lot better. And you've got to be careful because Yan has some great takedown defense. This fight should be awesome. I can't wait to see who wins this fight. These guys are explosive and neither of them are going to give up and they both have cardio for days. So as the first title fight, this thing should be a fucking banger. The next fight is Amanda Nunes versus Megan Anderson. Nunes Anderson is a good fight. Anderson was an Invicta champion and she fought another Evicta champion in Spencer who beat her who went on to get destroyed by Nunes but 
Anderson is on a two-fight winning streak. She earned her chance against Nunez. Good luck with that one. That's a hell of an earning there. That broad is scary. Nunez destroys people. But Anderson can bang, and she is a purple belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But again, she's running into Amanda Nunez, who is on an 11-fight winning streak, going back six years. Double division champ, champ, champ. This girl is a monster. She is just tore through two different divisions. Holly Holmes, Cyborg. I mean, the list goes on and on. Jermaine Gerandamine. This fucking girl has destroyed everybody in her way. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. I am excited to see the fight. I think Anderson's a tough fighter. I think that this is good for her career and experience. But I do think she's running into a buzzsaw in Amanda Nunes. I know this is a rescheduled fight, so she's had even longer to think about it. I think the original one was scheduled for 256. But it's another title fight. Needs to be done. It's awesome. I'm so excited for all of these fights. But I think Anderson's in trouble. And I think Amanda Nunes... Crushes her in the first round by devastating fashion, either knockout or TKO. All right, guys, now for the main card of the evening. All right, I'm really excited for this fight. This should be a great fight. This is champion versus champion. Jan Balowicz versus Israel Adonage. Now, Jan may be the best comeback story in UFC history. Jan started out four and six in the UFC almost getting cut. Then in 2017, everything changed when he won eight out of nine with five stoppages to go on and win the belt. Being the first champion in forever, not named DC or John Jones. And Jan has a devastating left hand. He is known for his power, but he has more finishes from submission than knockout because he uses his striking to take you down, usually a double leg. And Jan will try submissions from unorthodox positions. Usually, your coach will teach you position before submission. But that's not the case with Jan. Jan will try to submit you from anywhere, some awkward positions. This dude can fight, and he is going to be fun to watch. But with Israel, he is a stand-up machine with precision and timing, and he is getting better in every fight. If he wins and wins the belt, he'll be the double champ doing it under a thousand days, beating Conor McGregor out for being the fastest to win two championship belts. Now that's impressive and this kid just keeps getting better and better with every fight. And if he wins, we're going to see Israel versus John Jones, which would be one of the best fights I could ask for. But Israel Adonage has taken out some of the best fighters in the UFC. He has beaten Whitaker, Torrey, Costa, Brunson, Gaslam, Yoel Romero. He has taken on everybody and won. And besides Izzy striking being out of this world, maybe one of the best in the UFC, his takedown defense is fucking amazing. And... I'm cheering for him. I really hope he wins this fight. And it's nothing against Jan, but I really want to see him fight John Jones. I really, really want to see that fight. That is one of the fights I want to see most in the UFC is Israel versus John Jones. So I'm really going for Israel in this fight. I think this fight alone will be worth the money you pay the UFC to watch this card. I am so excited for this UFC 259. Couldn't ask for a better birthday weekend. And all right, guys, I hope you like the video. If you're watching on Facebook, please like and follow. On YouTube, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. And also, if you enjoyed it at all, please share and tell a friend to tell a friend. All right, guys, this card is so stacked that even Dominic Cruz, Kenny did not make the main card, which is the last fight of the prelims. That should be a good fight, too. I'm excited to see Dominic back in the cage after a layoff. I know that he doesn't believe in ring rust, so we'll see what goes on with that. I'm just excited. That's how stacked this card is, that the preliminaries are going to be off the chart. And I'll get back at you later this week with some betting lines for the fights. If you want to get on FanDuel and drop some bets, 
talk about which money lines are the best, which fights are the safest. All right, guys, thanks for checking us out. This is the Yankee and the Brit. I'm the Yankee J. Next time, we'll be back with my boy, Maddie the Brit, who's going to be dropping some cricket videos. So, you guys, if you enjoy cricket or soccer or football, as they say in Europe, check us out. You like any American sports, check us out. All right, guys, one world, one love. Deuces.